Welcome to Perfectionists Anonymous, a podcast-style channel dedicated to unraveling the myth of perfectionist living. I'm your host, Caitlin, and I'm a recovering perfectionist. I invite you to sit down, relax, and hang out with me, your supportive friend, who knows how difficult perfectionism can be and who wants to find a better way. Thank you for joining me today. At its root, perfectionism isn't really about a deep love of being meticulous. It's about fear. Fear of making a mistake, fear of disappointing others, fear of failure, fear of success. Michael Law Greetings, fellow perfectionists, and welcome to today's episode. Today, I wanted to dispel some misconceptions around the idea of being a perfectionist and talk about five sure signs that you are a perfectionist, even if you don't think that you are. In fact, a lot of people don't realize that they're engaging in perfectionist thinking, and a lot of people don't actually identify as a perfectionist even if they're living in a way that aligns with perfectionistic values. So what do I mean by all that? Many people don't identify with the label of perfectionist because there's a certain amount of pressure that comes with the title. Many people may engage in perfectionistic thinking, but they don't identify as a perfectionist because they can't see themselves as perfect. If you're painfully aware of all of your flaws and you can't help but view yourself as entirely imperfect, then how could you possibly be a perfectionist? Well, the very fact that you put pressure on yourself to be better in certain areas of your life, even though you feel like you'll never measure up, is exactly perfectionism. If you know you're imperfect and that knowledge bothers you on any level, then you're probably secretly a perfectionist. Additionally, you don't need to be a global perfectionist to engage in perfectionistic thinking. I identify as a global perfectionist because it touches every single area of my life. I have always known that I'm a perfectionist because there isn't an area of my existence that I haven't tried to control with perfectionistic thinking. But this isn't the case for everybody. Many people only apply perfectionistic thinking to one, two, or a few areas of their life, but that's enough to mess up their brains in those few areas. This is largely because even if your personality doesn't automatically lean towards perfectionism, our cultural and societal systems absolutely do, and you are bound to absorb at least a few of those messages. Whether it's your diet and exercise, your work performance, your school performance, your social media presence, how often you hustle and are productive, your romantic relationship status, your friendship status, and so on, not a single realm of the American existence is free of perfectionistic messaging. And this means that you have likely adapted some perfectionistic thinking in at least one area of your life. Of course, this won't apply to everyone. But if you're here, I think I can prove that it applies to you with five sure signs that you're a perfectionist, at least in some areas of your life. And before we get too far into things, no, this is not going to be a BuzzFeed list where I peg perfectionists as people who have immaculately clean houses, use color-coded pens in their daily planners, and who never have wrinkled clothes. Those are stereotypes, and while some of them might be true for some perfectionists, they do not go nearly deep enough into defining the roots of perfectionistic thinking. Because what defines a perfectionist is not how they appear on the outside, but what they think and feel on the inside. Sign number one. You are likely a perfectionist if you ever engage in black and white, all or nothing thinking. This does not just apply to moral quandaries, although it certainly can. Many perfectionists do have a very strong sense of what they believe is good and right 
bad, and wrong, and they may cling to their developed moral codes for dear life. But black and white, all or nothing thinking expands far beyond that into everyday situations with thoughts like these. Oh God, I ate a cupcake and broke my diet. Now I'm going to gain 50 pounds. Crap, I remembered all of my kids' beach toys but forgot the towels. What kind of horrible mom does that? Nobody that I have a crush on ever likes me back. I must be completely unlovable. I got 8 out of 10 on the quiz. That's a B minus. Oh my God, I'm going to fail this class. Black and white, all or nothing thinking takes an objective circumstance and immediately turns it into a catastrophe, the worst case scenario. Instead of focusing on the fact that you got eight questions correct on a 10 point quiz, you hyper focus on the fact that 80% is technically a B minus, and now your grade is horribly, unequivocally ruined. Instead of noticing that you were an attentive mom who remembered all of the beach toys for the beach trip, you hyper-focus on the one thing that you did forget, and all of a sudden you are no longer a decent parent. If you step on the scale and you notice that your weight has increased by two pounds, you don't think about all of the other factors that could be at play. Your brain goes immediately to, I'm only eating salads today. These jumps in thinking do not allow for any nuance, gray area, forgiveness, or understanding, and they can happen in every single area of your life or just a few. If you engage in this kind of thinking in any area of life, then your brain is working with perfectionistic thinking patterns. Because we all intuitively know that the words always and never rarely actually apply to real life situations. And we all know that gray area is where most people exist 99% of the time. But a perfectionist brain is really good at jumping to these kinds of all or nothing conclusions. Sign number two. You are likely a perfectionist if you have difficulty living in the present moment. This is because people who are engaging in perfectionistic thinking need to be on the alert for mistakes and planning for them or ruminating about past mistakes in order to try and shame themselves into avoiding them in the future. If you are constantly on the lookout for what could go wrong or are frequently rustling around in your brain and bringing to mind all of the mistakes that you wish you could forget from the past, then it's incredibly difficult to pay attention to what's going on around you in the here and now. A brain that is trapped in either the future or the past isn't noticing all of the goodness that is around them. It's hyper-focused on all the bad things that could happen or have happened. This can appear in several different ways. For example, maybe the start of the work week, Monday for most people is such a drag for you and all you can think about is when Friday rolls around and it's the weekend. You feel tired and cranky and you just can't wait until your circumstances change because weekends are so much better than weekdays at work. In this case, your brain is living in the future and is very likely missing the signs of goodness going on in the present. If anything goes wrong, though, you'll notice that because it will play into your brain's narrative that weekdays suck and weekends are glorious, and you'll be so much happier once this week is over. The brain is hardwired to pay more attention to the negative than the positive anyway, but in these situations, it goes into overdrive. That's an example of your brain living in the future, but this phenomenon of brain time traveling also happens with the past. These thoughts also pull you out of the present and cause you to ruminate on the things in the past that you wish had been different. Maybe you recall that one time that you said something cringy and you just wish you could take it back. Maybe you remember that one time that your boss chastised you for a minor mistake. Maybe you remember a past relationship that ended horribly and all of the ways that you wish it had been different. Regardless of the thought, perfectionist brains are shockingly excellent at reminding you of past mistakes or imperfections, pulling you out of the present moment. So, whether it's the past or the future, perfectionist brains really have a tough time living in the here and now. 
Because if you're in the here and now, are you being vigilant about all of the things that could or have gone wrong? Sign number three, you are likely a perfectionist if you have a vocal inner critic. To a certain extent, everyone has an inner critic. For a variety of reasons, our brains are constantly putting words to thoughts. This is normal and healthy and an important reason why humans are so effectively able to communicate, use language, practice executive functioning skills like high-level problem solving, and manage our emotions. However, for some, especially those who engage in perfectionistic thinking, that voice inside the head can become, for lack of a better word, really mean. An inner critic is that voice inside your head that tells you everything that's wrong with you. To a certain extent, having an inner critic can be adaptive and healthy. It helps you practice self-awareness, which in turn helps you moderate your emotions and behavior in order to adapt to certain situations around you. It's the inner critic, for example, that tells you that you're standing too close to someone and making them uncomfortable, so you should move. It's the inner critic that tells you that something you said to someone made them look sad, so you should try to repair the relationship. It's not all bad, but for perfectionists, it skews to maladaptive levels more frequently than not. I personally imagine my inner critic as an angry cloaked figure that snarls and sneers at me about how worthless and unlovable I am. The inner critic says things like, you'll never be good enough. Did you see that look she gave you? She obviously thinks you're stupid. Of course she's right. People don't think you're pretty, you're ugly. Why did you say it like that? You sounded so rude. Gosh, you're such an awful person. Why can't you compromise on that? People see you for who you are, you know. A greedy, selfish witch. Like I said, mean. It's these really mean internalized messages that we would never in a million years say to another person that define so much of perfectionistic thinking. Because a perfectionistic brain thinks that we need to be mean to ourselves in order to either motivate or punish ourselves. Because there's always something to improve upon, according to a perfectionist brain. Positive reinforcement, forgiveness, and grace just don't do the trick. The inner critic is cruel, loud, and unrelenting, and a sure sign of perfectionistic thinking. Sign number four. You are likely a perfectionist if you find yourself relying heavily on outside validation. This ties into sign number three, because unsurprisingly, it's incredibly difficult to validate your own worth when you have a really vocal inner critic constantly reminding you how worthless you actually are. Perfectionists learn early on that validation can come from other people. We can get praise from our teachers or coaches. We can get praise from our parents. We can get praise from our friends. We can get it from physical reminders like awards or numbers. We can get it from random compliments from strangers, and so on. And while getting validation from others sounds nice and can feel good in the moment, relying on outside sources to confirm your worth and value is a sure sign of perfectionism and also a pretty certain way to get yourself stuck in an unwinnable loop of feeling like you can never get enough validation. This is because validation from outside sources doesn't actually work if you don't believe the thing for which you are receiving the validation. If you like the outfit you're wearing, and you like how you look in it, and somebody compliments you, then you probably can actually accept the compliment and be like, yeah, this is a great outfit. I do look good. Thank you. But if somebody validates you for something that you don't believe, you may feel good in the moment until those sneaky thoughts of self-doubt worm their way back into your brain and simply remind you that you don't actually deserve that validation. They make you second guess the compliment that was meant to make you feel good. For example, maybe you don't mind the clothes that you're wearing, but when you put them on in the morning, you were thinking an awful lot about how you didn't like how your body looked in them. Perhaps you're wearing jean shorts on a hot summer day, and you can't help but think about how big your thighs look in the shorts. 
If somebody compliments you on the shorts and says that they're cute, you might believe them. But more likely, your brain will jump immediately to, did they see how huge my thighs looked? Are they just being nice? Do they think my legs look weird? Do they just like the shorts? Does my butt look good too? Am I beautiful? <sighs> no, I'm not. Relying on outside validation sometimes becomes the only way a perfectionist brain can cope, but it comes with a price. Every compliment, every word of encouragement starts to feel like a subtle critique. And sometimes it gets to a point where you start actively seeking validation from others by trying to fish for compliments or by trying to control your romantic partner so that they only say the quote-unquote right things to you. Again, it's a coping strategy for overwhelmed perfectionist brains and a pretty clear sign that you're secretly a perfectionist. Sign number five. You are likely a perfectionist if you have a complicated relationship with emotions. By this, I mean that you have the belief that keeping things happy, calm, and peaceful, i.e. perfect, is vastly preferable to situations that involve anger, anxiety, or sadness, i.e. vulnerability. Perfectionistic thinking tells us that we should always be regulated and in a good mood, if we're not, then something is wrong and needs to be fixed. This mindset also extends to those that are around us. If someone around you is angry, then something is wrong and needs to be fixed, usually either you or the other person. What ends up happening is a process by which perfectionists learn that they are always supposed to be happy. So they quash all of their other feelings and try to bury them down deep. But this does not work and those emotions eventually bubble up and explode out like an overwhelming volcanic eruption. This also appears in how we cope with others around us experiencing quote-unquote negative emotions. People with perfectionistic thinking patterns take on an inordinate amount of responsibility for the feelings of others. If someone close to you is feeling sad, angry, or anxious, it's either because you did something wrong and you're a horrible person, or they did something wrong and they're being unreasonable. Sitting with emotions that are not along the line of happy becomes incredibly uncomfortable and distressing because they have to be somebody's fault, yours or theirs, and neither option feels good or okay. This can also lead to us completely misinterpreting the intent, meaning, or consequences of our emotions and those of others. Perfectionistic thinking only notices that someone is angry, and then, bam, that needs to be remedied somehow by either you or them. It doesn't take into consideration why they're angry, if it had anything to do with you in the first place, what vulnerabilities they're trying to express, what they wish they could say but can't find the right words for, etc., Emotions in a perfectionist brain become a dangerous game, one that's unpredictable and unwinnable. So, what do you think? Do any of these sound like you? If they do, then you're secretly, or not so secretly, a perfectionist. They don't all have to apply, and they don't have to apply to every single area of your life. If you're a global perfectionist like I am, then these patterns probably show up for you frequently in all areas of life. But for many people, maybe you only relate to one or two of these. For example, maybe you only notice yourself having a vocal inner critic and requiring a lot of outside validation, but only in your friendships and romantic relationships, not at work or in your hobbies. Maybe you notice that you have a complicated relationship with negative emotions and engage in black and white thinking but only when it comes to yourself and your thoughts about your self-esteem, not when you think about the people you love and care about. Any ratio, any combination, in any life scenarios, they're all perfectionist behaviors, just in different proportions. And that's what this podcast is really all about. Finding the areas of your life that perfectionistic, people-pleasing, anxiety-ridden thoughts and behaviors have touched, and reckoning with whether or not you want to let them stay in your life in those particular areas. People don't have to strive for perfection in all things in order to feel poorly about themselves and their self-worth. 
though those do usually go hand in hand. People just have to be aware that there are expectations put forth by their families, their cultures, their communities, and their overarching societies to experience the side effects of never feeling like you'll be able to measure up, constantly feeling like you aren't good enough, and always wondering what you should be doing in order to be worthy. The messaging is all there, even if the seeds for a perfectionistic personality weren't already. We're surrounded by this messaging. It's loud and unrelenting and becomes so ingrained that we sometimes don't even realize that it's there. And it is there, but it doesn't have to be. Whether you found this podcast because you've always identified as a perfectionist like me, or you're just now noticing that you have some unhelpful thought patterns whirling around your brain, the answer is the same. Identify the thoughts question the thoughts, and then actually decide what we want to do with them. There are a lot more perfectionists out there than anyone really realizes. And perfectionistic thinking is on the rise for dozens of reasons, especially in younger generations. I know this to be true. I see it every day in myself, in the elementary age students that I do therapy with, in the high school students that I coach, and in my dear friends. We put so much pressure on ourselves to live up to the perfect standards and expectations that we're told we should care so much about, and in the process, we lose our authentic selves and experience untold levels of pain, misery, anxiety, and depression. I just don't think it's worth it anymore, and hopefully I've convinced you too. If you identify as a perfectionist, or if you just find some of what I say sounding familiar, you are welcome here. I care about you. I see you. And I know how hard you try every single day. You are worthy and valuable, just as you are, for who you are. Let's keep fighting the good fight together, so that we can actually believe those things in the deepest corners of our souls because they are 100% true, but believing them to be so is the hardest part. I open today's episode with a quote attributed to author Michael Law. At its root, perfectionism isn't really about a deep love of being meticulous. It's about fear. Fear of making a mistake, fear of disappointing others, fear of failure, fear of success. And this is incredibly true. A perfectionist isn't necessarily someone who just really wants to get everything right, but someone who fears getting something wrong. The pressures to be good and right, whatever that means for your lived experience, are heavy. And we all carry them, perfectionist label or not. Thank you for listening today, fellow perfectionists. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more perfectionism-related content and to help the channel grow. If these episodes are resonating with you and you think they might resonate with others, please feel free to share it as well. Until next time, fellow perfectionists.